Hey everyone, it's Gareth Hughes here and uh, today what I want you to talk you through is how we're going to get you to take back control of your business. And, uh, and the way we do that is through the mastery. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to roll the intro and then we're going to get back to it. Okay, so back in. Uh, so this whole level of mastery is fundamental to building a business. The amount of business owners that I speak to, uh, who when we first start working together, they want to work on the sales or the marketing or the team, uh, which is all great stuff. We can do that as well. But if this isn't in place, then none of that is going to matter. Because I always say, you know, uh, so brilliant, we're going to do more marketing, we're going to get loads more clients. Uh, well, what's that going to do to your time? Uh, when they're already working, you know, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, or, you know, we're going to get loads of new clients, that's brilliant. How are your team going to cope with that? Well, they're not. Okay, what's that going to do to your margins? Well, actually, I don't know what my margins are. Right, well, let's start down the bottom. And it kind of makes sense, really, because uh, you wouldn't build a house without putting in the foundations. And these are the, just the foundations to the house. Uh, so we want to put these in place first. And then we want to build the house. We're going to start with destination mastery. Why do we start here? Well, I always say to people, you've got to start with the end in mind. Uh, so what does that mean for you? Well, what I want to know is, what does your business look like when you're finished? And when is it going to be finished? Like, give me an actual date that your business is going to be finished. And it's going to run without you. Because remember, when we're doing all of this, what we're trying to create is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you because otherwise you may as well just go get a job. So what date, what physically what date is your business finished? And what does it look like? What's the turnover? How much staff have you got? Uh, what are you doing in the business? Are you able to take holidays? What? So give me the date that is finished and what it looks like. The reason why we do that is because clarity leads to focus. So the amazing the power of a date. Uh, when you set a date on a goal, uh, makes it 100 times more likely that you'll succeed and you'll actually achieve that goal simply by putting a date on it. So I don't care if that date is five years in the future or 10 years in the future or 20 years in the future, but give me a date uh, and make sure that everybody knows that as well. Tell, tell your wife or your husband, uh, tell your family that that's what's going to happen. Uh, so make sure that you're starting with the end in mind. And if that means that your business needs a CEO, and that's brilliant, but put that onto the organizational chart. If that means your business needs a marketing department, brilliant. Put that onto the organizational chart. That's fantastic. When you're doing your goals, make sure they are big goals. You know, there's a saying that we have in action, which is if your goals don't scare you and excite you at the same time, then they're not big enough. So with your goals, swing for the fences and make sure that they're big and make sure you have to grow into that person in order to fulfill them. If it's a goal you can achieve just uh, as you are, the person you are, then it's not big enough. Remember, your goal has to enroll and inspire other people. They have to get behind you, not only your team, but your clients and your customers as well, because they wanna be part of something bigger. They wanna be part of the dream. So make sure you plaster it everywhere, your customers know what the goal is, your clients know where you're going, but most importantly, your team knows where you're going and I've got a bit of homework for you in a minute. So when we're setting goals, there's three types of goals that we want to look at. And the first one is a negative goal. And the best way to illustrate this is uh, the frog and the hot water. If you haven't seen that video, uh, jump on YouTube and uh, go and grab it. Uh, and essentially it's this, if you put a frog into hot boiling water, then it jumps straight out. But if you put it in cold water and you heat up the water, then it slowly dies. And it's the same with the goals. If you pick a goal, which is a negative goal, i.e. it's an away from goal. Uh, so for example, that might be, I don't want to work 80 hours a week. Well, guess what happens? You start working 80 hours a week, right? So if you pick an away from goal, chances are you set your mindset in order to achieve that. That's not what we want to do. So the next goal is a positive goal, and this is a towards goal. So this is making sure that we pick a goal that we can move towards, that we can grow towards, that the team can en enroll towards, that we're working towards something positive. Uh, and all the languaging around that goal needs to be positive as well. 
And the next goal I want you to look at is your legacy goal. So uh, what I mean by this is, it's gotta be a goal which is bigger than you. So what's your legacy? What are you gonna leave behind for people? Uh, when you're finished, what are they gonna talk about? Uh, and that's what we talk about when we say a legacy goal. So a couple of bits of homework then. So what I wanna know is what does your business look like when it's finished? Uh, what date is it finished? And what is your legacy goal for your business? What's gonna happen after you have finished? Okay, so uh, after we've taken care of Destination Mastery, we then wanna get a handle on your time. And we wanna make sure that your time is spent as efficiently as possible. So we move on to time mastery. And one thing I've learned being in business and being around really successful people is that they are absolutely ruthless with their time. So I want you to do the same. Be absolutely ruthless with your working day and make sure that you fit it all into your working day. It's not acceptable for you to be working through the night and missing out on family time. So whatever you want to achieve, make sure you can fit it into your working day as well. So be absolutely ruthless with how you spend your time. One of the ways we do that is by setting a default diary. So for example, this might work that every Monday morning you are doing office work or you are looking at the finances or you are dealing with team, but it happens every Monday morning. The same with Monday afternoon, the same with Tuesday morning, the same with uh, Tuesday afternoon. What does your week look like in order for you to achieve what you need to achieve? Some of that might be client facing, that's brilliant, but when? And make sure you stick to it as well. So if a client wants to see you, it's yep, uh, I'm available on Wednesday afternoon, if that's when you choose to do your client meetings. Uh, so get other people to stick to it as well. Make sure your team know what your default diary looks like, and then they can book things around that. The other way to get more efficient with your time is before everyone goes for that day, before they leave work, they make a list for what needs to be achieved the very next day. Notice my language there, it's not a to-do list. It is a goals list for what they want to achieve the very next day. Then what I want you to do is on that day, every half an hour, set your alarm and write down what you actually did. And if it was uh, eating lunch, that's fine. If it was having a coffee, that's fine. But write down every half an hour what you did. You'll slowly get an idea as to where your time is going, where you're seeping time. When you do that, and you see where most of your time is being sent, spent, when you see where most of your time is being spent, I want you to see if you can do three things. So I want you to see if you can systemize that, if you can train someone else to do it, or if you can get rid of that task to somebody else straight away. Now if you systemize, you might still need to do some of that work. That's fine, if it's 10% of what you were spending on it before, then that's a win, right? So make sure you look at different ways of you doing. Sometimes that just means writing a list or using a flow chart. Uh, but make sure you look at systematizing, training someone, or getting rid of it straight away. Okay, so uh, there's no point going out to get new customers or new clients if you can't service the ones that you've already got. So that's why we look at delivery mastery over here. What this means is generally just being consistent with a service or product that you provide. So make sure that the service or product that you do is the same for every single customer or client that, that you get. And I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again because it is so true, profit does not come from customers, it comes from repeat customers. So people coming back to you time and time again, that's where your profit is made, okay? So this is why this is so important. And think about the last time you went to a restaurant and it was fine, it was just okay. Uh, right, but when they asked you what you thought of it, you said it was good, all right? So what I want you to think about is how can you get that a bit more accurate? I'm a big fan of customer or client surveys. So getting an uh, anonymous survey out to your customers doesn't cost a lot. Uh, you can get a load of information from there. Getting feedback from your customers is so important. People often say to me, well, how can I get uh, the, the accurate feedback from my clients. How about you start by asking them? Asking them what is cool about the product or service that you provide or what is not so good about the product or service you provide and start there. 
And this is a good one. Where you are getting loads of complaints, that is where you do not have mastery over this. So look in your business, where are you getting the most complaints from? And it, chances are in that area, in that department, you don't have mastery. So that's a great way to start. Getting feedback from your clients, I've already spoken about, and a good way of doing that is through an NPS score. So all companies all around the world uh, do a net promoter score. And that gives you a really good, accurate measure as to where you sit in the marketplace. Okay, so we've looked at destination mastery, so looking at where you're going, uh, time mastery, so getting control of your time, uh, making sure it's as efficient as possible. And remember I said be as ruthless as you can with your time. Uh, and delivery mastery, so getting a consistent product or service out there to get your repeat customers. Repeat customers is where your profit comes from. New customers are good, repeat customers are great. So the final area we're gonna look at is finance mastery. So uh, the amount of business owners I speak to who they've got a little bit of a handle on the numbers, uh, but actually what happens is their accountant just talks to them every quarter and uh, they really don't know where they are with the numbers. It's absolutely vital. If you are going to make informed decisions, to have a handle on your numbers. Because if you don't know, how do you know if a new product or service that you're gonna provide or a new geographical area is gonna make you any money? You can't make that decision. So getting a handle on your numbers is absolutely key. The first thing I want you to do, so this is your first bit of homework from this video, is to get an idea of your fixed costs. And what that does is it works out your break even point. That's brilliant if that's a great starting point for you. But what I want you to do is a bit more than that. So I want you to work out your profit break even. So whatever your fixed costs are and your break even point, work out how much profit you want to make anyway and add that on to your fixed costs so that you know exactly when you make a profit. And that's another thing to work out is at what point in the month or week do you make a profit? Do you start to make a profit? And you can get really granular with this as well. Because you can say, so at what point during the day do I want to have made a profit by? Every sale after two in the afternoon, that's all profit. All right, that's a great place to get to, okay? So try and work that out, try and get as granular as you can. Then I want you to have three bank accounts, not just the normal one that every business has. I want you to have three or even more if you can, but start with three. So you're gonna have an operating account, uh, that's brilliant. Uh, this is where all your money gets paid into and it's where you sort out your finances from. Then you're gonna have a tax account. So every bit of tax that you collect, every bit of VAT that you collect, goes straight into the tax account. Do it twice a month on the 11th and the 25th of the month, okay? And that money gets transferred straight into account, a, a tax account. What that means is there's no surprises when uh, you get a call from HMRC or it's the end of the tax uh, period. You know exactly what you've got, okay? And there's no surprises. 20% of everything you earn goes straight into the tax account. Then I want you to, whatever profit you want to earn, whatever you want to pay yourself, that goes into the profit account. And that is yours. And try and make sure that you're doing that first. So pay yourself first. Uh, there's a great book called Profit First. Read it and advocate exactly this. So make sure you're paying yourself first. Everything else comes secondary because that's why you went into business in the first place, okay? So open up three bank accounts, an operating account, a tax account, and a profit account. Once you start to get a handle on your numbers, you'll be able to start making informed decisions about where your business is going, linking back to the destination mastery. That's the four areas of mastery that I want you to go through. Hopefully you've got some good action points. Hopefully you've got some good homework and you're gonna start taking back control of your business. So it would be great to know your thoughts on this. If you've liked it, hit the thumbs up. Uh, it'd be great to see you again. Look out for the next video coming soon. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>